next guest, a talented uh, writer and performer who you see uh, every uh, Saturday night on Saturday Night Live right here on NBC. Here now we have some videotape of this man in action. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Phil Hartman. Nice to have you here. Thanks. Thank Dave. you very much for your By time. By the way, Paul, I do know the Canadian handshake. When you meet a Canadian, you're <laughs> supposed to back up to him or her and slap beaver tails. It, uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. We're a nutty group. <laughs> Look at all the nutty uh, kids. Did you, uh, I think I saw you a long time ago in Los Angeles with a, a group called the Groundlings. Is that correct or not correct? That's right. I performed with the Groundlings for about 10 years. Who else was in that group? Very funny show. Uh, well, there were some great people. Uh, Paul Rubens, who mm -hmm. went on to become Pee Wee Herman. Right. Uh, <clears throat> we collaborated on the original Pee Wee Herman show, and I co-wrote his first movie, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And uh, let me see, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Yep. But a lot of great stars and actors who work regularly, like Edie McClurg, Doug Cox. Uh, yeah. People you would recognize. And, and it, no, I'm serious. When you, you see them a lot, and you would, that's no, yeah, I, oh, I meant that seriously. Uh, and then you worked in Germany, you worked in Europe for a while? Well, I went through a period about five years ago where I was searching for myself. And, uh, <laughs> I'm doing that tonight, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> We're pulling for you, pal. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I, know I, I, I was inspired by the, the uh, miniseries Roots, mm -hmm. which they went on to make into a book, I understand. <laughs> um, but I wanted, to, I wanted to, you know, get to the root of my family tree, and uh, so I, I uh, my mom worked out a little family tree. Uh -huh. I went to Ireland, and England and France and uh, and ended up in Germany where I ran out of money and I decided to put an act together. Mm -hmm. um, Germans really love American culture. In, in character, they're very much like the American people, uh, except they build better cars and we don't invade Poland every 40 years. <laughs> but um, we... I, I put together an act to raise some cash and... Uh, and you would go around to, to what? Little to, to cabarets, local clubs, clubs? In, in Stuttgart, Dusseldorf, Berlin. Yeah. And uh, it was a monster sensation. And in Stern magazine, they voted me the funniest man in Germany. <laughs> really? Yeah. And, and uh, it was mainly just uh, doing impressions and reflections what on American culture. What kind of things culture. would you do? Well, can I do just a minute Please of it here? Please do, yeah. Okay, let me just stand up and do it. <clears throat> Good morning, meine Damen und Herren. Willkommen auf... The David Letterman Show. My name is Philip Hartman. Did you see what I'm impression with Aiden? Fantastic. And a grand American comica, Jack Benny. Jack Benny. No Rochester. It will not run to common. Danke. Very nice. Danke. Oh, the. Hey, fantastic, how much of the top banana with the film Flying Tigers. Look out of his way. Here he is coming. John Lane, look out. John Lane. Basta Leben, Pappy. Du flunken der depth perception examiner. Du will nicht waffen mit der Flying Tigers. Danke, und, und, wie sagen, meine favorite dish. Jack Nicholson und Chinatown. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> In Schuldigen, see Frau Moray. <laughs> Wo bist du intercourse and mit du Vater? <laughs> Der will nicht deine pregnancy mit du sister, Robin. <laughs> the funniest man in Germany. Very impressive. Well, yeah, but, you know, I, Thanks, thanks a lot. But I, I came back here, and you know, if you're you not ever, rich, little, they don't care. Did you ever run into uh, Jack Nicholson? Did you ever, do you know him at all? Oh, I did run into Jack Nicholson. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know if people realize this, but the people on our show really get along great. And I hang out with Dana Carvey and uh, uh, John Lovitz a lot, and we were golfing together. At a now this seems like a very strange day to begin with. Well, golfing with the liar and the church lady. Yeah, yeah you know. Uh, <laughs> Hey, John, what'd you get on that score? Uh, seven, hey, a double eagle. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't that special? Come on, fellas, let's move along. And, um, 
but well, we go to this little place out in Studio City, and it's, it's the only driving range out in the valley where my wife and I live. And uh, so we, we got to the first hole, and who walks up behind us but Jack Nicholson? Uh -huh. And we were just, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to say. We were so overwhelmed because, you know, we're obviously great fans. So uh, we teed off, and we played to the second hole, which is the longest hole in this particular course. And as a courtesy, you're supposed to wave uh, the players Let play through. through. Yeah. So we, we, we got to the green, and, uh, and Jack uh, played to the green, and he came up and... Finally, Lovitz broke down and went over to him and said, Hey, you know, my friend Phil Hartman uh, actually uh, replaced some dialogue for you in the movie The Border, which is true. He used your voice in the film. Yes, it, it was yeah. uh, oftentimes they have to replace dialogue in a film. And um, Jack wasn't there to do it for The Border. I think he was off doing Reds in New York. And so I auditioned and, and, and got to do his voice so you, uh, so for your some voice lines. In that film. That's right, okay. in some of the lines. And uh, so I went up to him and I said, Oh, yeah, um, I did your voice. It's that scene where you leave the clothing store with Harvey Keitel and you turn to him and say, I want to thank you and your wife for all your help. <laughs> and uh, he smiled and said, no wonder that movie was my only loser. <laughs> Words of encouragement from Jack. Uh, we got to go away. We'll be right back. Funniest man in Germany, Phil Hartman. Phil, good to see you. Thank you very much Thank for being you. here. Nice job. And uh, tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, Mike and the Mechanics, have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Uh, our first guest is a writer and actor and comedian who is part of the cast of characters on Saturday Night Live. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. Welcome back, Phil Hartman. Phil. You know, uh, we, were, we were talking about you this afternoon uh, before your appearance here, and it didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of the fact that you were or were a Canadian. That's right, man. And the place goes nuts. And soon to become an American soon citizen. Soon to be an American citizen. I applied for, uh, I applied for U.S. citizenship, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. How long uh, have you lived in this country? <laughs> 33 years. <laughs> really? 33 years as a Canadian living in this country? That's right. Yeah. Yeah what you call a permanent resident of the United States. And, and what, uh, what uh, finally uh, changed your mind to become a citizen? Well, when the Vietnam War finally ended, mm -hmm. I thought, uh, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> uh, actually, you know, when you get older, I, I have a family now, and I'm starting to think about the importance uh, of a vote. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel especially strong about environmental issues. I really, I want the vote. So, in Los Angeles, I applied for U.S. citizenship, and, you know, it's really funny. I got an immigration attorney. Uh, he gave me all these pamphlets and things to study for the test, because the way it works is you apply, and then you, your big test is, a, is an oral interview. And so I learned everything. I learned the amendments to the Constitution, the, the checks and balances, the three branches of government, uh, how many people are in the House of Representatives, how many senators from every state, everything. Yeah. Here are the questions they asked me. Now, let, let, let me give this test to you and see how you All do right. it. <laughs> Who is the President of the United States? <laughs> That's a question. Yeah. yeah. All right. I know that one. <laughs> George Bush. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Because yeah. people get this wrong. As my attorney tells, told they me, do. people get, get these Now, they must wrong. get more difficult, the questions. They do get more difficult. What are the three colors of the American flag? Red, red, white, and blue. Now, see, that's correct. But my attorney told me, don't say blue, white, and red, or red, uh, blue, and white. That's no. wrong. It has to be red, it has to be white, red, and blue. white, and blue. Okay. How, ma how many of these can you get wrong and still become a citizen? I, I don't know. I, I know I got them all right. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's an arbitrary choice of the person who's uh, interviewing you. Okay, the third question. What is the purpose of the executive branch of the federal government? What is the purpose of the executive branch? <laughs> yeah. To uh, just uh, hold a, a nice party once a year. 
That's right. Exact, that's exactly right. Well, that, that, that would be close enough. Yeah. But the, the big question was, what is the best car made in America? Uh, and did you have an answer for that? I got it right. Uh. It, it's the Honda Accord. <laughs> So if I'm cleared by the FBI, I, um, I will be a U.S. citizen. Well, congratulations. Uh, you, do you feel, you, of course, you don't feel any different, but it must be a, a, some, I don't know, sense of pride for you. All I know is I'll never have to go back to that oppressive Canadian <laughs> regime. Uh, uh, things are going well for you up there uh, Saturday Night Live this year, Things are going great, you know. Um, it, it's just a thrill for me just to come into this building, yeah. the beautiful... GE building. Well, you know, it was the RCA building for 66, 67 years, but it's the GE building yeah, yeah. now. Soon to be maybe partly the Mitsubishi the building. Mitsubishi building, yeah. The Rockefellers sold off a chunk of uh, Rockefeller Center to pick up some ready cash. What do you think I they think, want that for, I, Dave? I don't know, but I think it's part of that Deborah Norville deal. <laughs> Somehow Mitsubishi and Norville got together and they're taking over the show and the building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a second female anchor theory, too. <laughs> I hadn't, hadn't heard that. I've been out of town. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's do a uh, commercial here, and we'll be right back with uh, Phil Hart. Set your clock back. Mrs. did it for me. Oh, that's that's very nice. More woman's work than is what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> uh, now, do you live? Do you have a home here and a home in uh, where? Or maybe just live here? I have an apartment in New York, and uh, we make our home in Los Angeles. So you're so. back and forth a lot. You're traveling back and a lot. Forth a lot. Yeah. In fact, flying to New York from L.A. last time, you know, we went on this MGM Grand right, Air. I've heard it's, of that. Yeah, it's 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 all first class. Right. Forty people on a 727. It's supposed to be very luxurious. Yeah, it's kind of like a flying Las Vegas Kino lounge. Ah, you know? good. A lot of brass, etched glass, burgundy velvet. <laughs> we were very anxious because. Uh, we have a 16-month-old, mm -hmm. and he tends to get a little hyperkinetic on takeoffs and landings. Sure. You, know? you, you remember that Warner Brothers cartoon character, the Tasmanian Devil? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whirling around. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, can, let, me, let me show you a picture, Sean. You got a close-up camera? Right here. He's, he's a little dreamer. And basically a good kid. He's obsessed with the telephone. I, I hope in a few years I'm not getting those $1,000 porn and <laughs> bills, you know, but... Uh, Does he actually porn. phone people around the country? No, he, he, just, he just cradles the phone. And I, I works guess, on his typing. Yeah, and he... And he <laughs> <laughs> talks in Chinese. I don't got your mouth. So it's you and uh, your wife My and wife your son? Ben and I, and lo and behold, we're seated in a private cabin with Elizabeth Taylor. And... We were so nervous because of Sean. But actually, everything went beautifully. Uh, takeoff was smooth. Sean had a bottle. He was fine. Um, soon we were having lunch. We weren't talking. Didn't want to disturb her. She said, uh, how old's your son? You know, a little small yeah. talk. I apologized when he threw a fork into her hair. <laughs> and, but, well. but we thought we were doing fine. And then it began, Dave, honestly, this stream of obnoxious well-wishers who impose themselves <laughs> on this woman. We, Brent and I were just in shock uh -huh. watching this parade. And the, the first guy was the worst. He was 50-ish, he was, uh, ponytail, aviator specs, jeans, guys, yeah. big concho belt. Mm -hmm. Those cowboy boots with the silver cap toes. Right. Dave, right. why do I hate those I don't, know. So I don't much. know what those are for. It's like, am I a cowboy? Am I a robot? I don't know. You know I, I just hate that. He had, from his elbow to his wrist, about a dozen of those massive silver turquoise bracelets right. that went out of style right. in, the, in the 70s, right? He plops down next to her, kind of like a drunken hippie Halston going, I just had to talk to you, you know, take your pick. Just any, meeny, miny, mo. I'll go into the lavatory and cut it off my arm with a blowtorch, you know. He just harangued her for about a half an hour. And he got up and another guy sat down, you know, this is uh, Bob Murphy, uh, Long Island Mutual Life. I don't know who's handling your life insurance needs, Ms. Taylor. Do you have enough coverage? Does anybody really? It's impossible. But look. Here's some brochures, you know, look through. We can talk in the weeks. No pressure. I'll be back later. And then the captain comes by, you know. 
Hey, Jack Luftmacher, you like the 727? Hell of a graph, isn't it? <laughs> hey, tighten up your seatbelt. I'll do a few barrel rolls for you. <laughs> She endured these people. Was she nice? Did she lose she her was, patience? She, no, she was like a saint. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, she sat there nodding, <laughs> smiling, didn't say anything. Right. But she just let them run out sure. on their own steam. Yeah. And she left. And then I figured, hey, what do I have to lose? Right. So I, I asked her if she wanted to host the show. Right. And she said she'd love to. In fact, it's funny. She said, I'm very eager to do my impersonation of John Belushi, mm -hmm. which I thought was funny because he did yeah. that <laughs> terrible impersonation of her. And when, when, when we parted, I took her hand in mine, Dave, and I told her what a lovely, gracious woman I thought she was, and she was very sweet. And I pulled a little bit of a practical joke on her as I held her hand, and I guess I can, I can reveal it now. Liz, you can stop searching for the stone. I've got it right here. <laughs> so, you actually got a ring off her. Yeah, but I, it was never my intention to keep it. Oh, no, I know. You know it was not just a nice good natured like airline that. prank. Yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the guy in the Long Island who handles the insurance, though? <laughs> Bob Murphy, Long Island. Uh, and you just you just finished a film with uh, Steve Martin. Well, I'm I'm writing a screenplay with Steve Martin. Oh, geez, that's very exciting. Yeah, and uh, go into production shortly. When? Uh, within the turn of the millennium. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll be very funny. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. Nice to see you. Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman. Palomino. What was the name of your golden Palomino, Johnny? <laughs> Debbie? Was it Debbie? It was pal. Debbie. Pal. Huh? It was <laughs> It was Pal. pal. <laughs> Johnny Pinto's golden Palomino Pal. Oh, the fun you guys used to have on that. Uh, great days, great days. Yeah. Our next guest is a uh, very versatile and uh, funny writer and performer who is uh, getting ready for the return of Saturday Night Live. They begin their uh, season of, uh, this Saturday. Uh, is it this Saturday? I think it is Saturday, isn't it? Or next Saturday. Huh? A week. I'm sorry. It's a week, week this Saturday. All right. All right. All right. So I, I made one damn mistake. That's okay. Not this Man, Saturday. Man, alive. That's right. It's a week from Saturday week from night. This Saturday. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program the multi talented, always funny Phil Hartman. Phil? <laughs> I don't know. That uh, was the dance that everybody could do. Yeah. <laughs> everybody could. Do. Did you do it a great deal? I do remember doing the yeah. twists. People go through really silly phases, don't they? Yes, yes. How I've was your summer? Share. Fantastic summer. What, what'd you do? Vacation? Work? Spend time with the family? All those things. Yeah. All those things out on the coast. Uh, the pace of life out there has finally started getting to me. Though. You don't like it so well, huh? Well, it's, you know... Up in the morning and into the pool and out to the golf course, down to the beach, out on the sailboat, you know, scuba diving, tennis, and on and on. If I'd like to drive you out of your bucking mind. <laughs> so. <laughs> Get back to New York. Get back to New York. Triple bolt yourself into the high-rise apartment. There you go. Listen to the gunfire and sirens down in the streets. It's so relaxing. <laughs> you know, this city... It's gotten a bad rap lately. Yeah. You're aware of this. Yes, I am. You read the papers. I do read the papers. I, it's just not <laughs> fair. It's still the greatest city in the world. Uh, period. Yeah. I was walking down 6th Avenue. Locally, we call it Avenue of the Americas. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked up at these skyscrapers, Dave, uh, and I was overwhelmed with the feeling that this town is a monument 
to man's desire to be stacked on top of other men. <laughs> and I don't mean to sound sexist because yeah. women like to be stacked too. Yeah. <laughs> well, all the women who've had implant surgery try to raise their hands. <laughs> um, what, what, what else is, is new? Uh, you know what I got life? into this summer? <laughs> Whoa! I got so much energy, because it was the first summer I really took off and pretty much relaxed. Yeah. Hence the twist. Yeah. <laughs> but um, scuba diving. Did. Yeah. You ever I've had the desire I've, to do that? No, not had the desire, but I've done. I spent Someone one forced day you to do it? I, yes, I spent one day doing it. Well, I am really hooked on this. You enjoy it? Yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, San Clemente Island. Mm -hmm. I was certified a couple of years ago for diving. <laughs> you got to explain everything. <laughs> Uh, went out to San Clemente Island for my advanced certification. Right. Wow. And in which you have to do a deep dive. How, how deep? 90, 90 feet. 90 feet. That's where it gets serious because mm -hmm. the deeper you go, the more dangerous it is. Oh, gets. sure. I could have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, 120 feet is the recommended limit for recreational dive. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to 90, just skirting disaster. Yeah. And we actually dove uh, a wreck, uh, a minesweeper that had been sunk. Uh, San Clemente Island's 50 miles off the coast of Santa San Barbara? Pedro. San Pedro. San Pedro. Yeah. There are eight islands, eight channel islands, uh, and I explored three of them this summer. Wow. S Santa Cruz Island is fantastic. Yeah. So now it's the diving, it's sailing. I went to the boat show in Stanford yesterday. I, I got to get a sailboat. Mm -hmm. You know, they say the two happiest days in a man's life are the day he buys a boat and the day he sells a boat. <laughs> and so I'm going to take the what, what kind of boat would you be purchasing? Well... A sailboat? A sailboat, yeah. yeah. Big sailboat? No, I, I think something, uh, you know, 29 to 35 mm -hmm. feet. Somewhere. So a medium-sized sailboat. Yeah, yeah, I'm in a sailing club in, in uh, Los Angeles, and we sail Ericsson 32s and 34s. I really love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some of this stuff down, Phil. <laughs> Erickson, 32. Uh, now, uh, while you're enjoying yourself through the summer and uh, pursuing your recreational activities and so on and so forth, what uh, are there things you do? Are you the kind of person that needs to ever be sharpening and honing acting skills? Do you, do you go through any of that? Do you worry about that? Yes, I do, because, you know, doing Saturday Night Live for four years, I've kind of got pigeonholed into this comedy thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Wait, You knew that might happen when you signed on, didn't that you? That was... <laughs> That was always a potential danger, but <laughs> my mom tells me I'm a great actor. Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. And, and so I, I really want to get into some dramatic stuff, and I really think I'd be great to play villain roles. So this, uh, this, this summer, I worked out with this. This is a toy. I have a little two-year-old boy, and this is one of his toys. Yeah. But I've been using it. Toy uh, telephone there. I call it the Improv 5000. Mm -hmm. And I've been working with this and working on my new villain character. <laughs> and uh, he's kind of a mobster kind of guy who uh, goes, uh, Come on in, Jimmy. <laughs> Have a seat. I think we should talk. Let's be friends. Oh, you want to be friends, do you? <laughs> I'm sure you do. Seems like you want to be friends with everybody, Jimmy. Like the DEA, the district attorney. Hmm. What do you have to say for yourself? We're going on vacation. Oh, yeah. Might be a permanent vacation for you. <laughs> Rough him up a bit. All right, that's enough. I like talking to you. Yeah. Seems like you like talking to a lot of people, you stooly slime ball. Rough him up. Right, 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 that's enough. Yeah. That's enough. Can you play with me? Well, that's a $20 rap a hard time playing with you, son. Who gave you those ideas? Those jokers down at the preschool? Let me tell you something. You play with me, you play hardball. In fact, maybe we should play a little five-card draw. Yeah, Joker's wild, Jack's a better, only the stakes are a little heavier than you might have thought. Your wife! Can you tell time? That's one of the things you learn in Sing Sing. <laughs> Rough him up a little bit. <laughs> Repeating himself. We might have done brain damage. You know. Yeah, I say it's here. Sure, sure. Very nice.
The Improv 5000. Thank God the batteries didn't give out. Uh, anyway, next week you begin your new uh, season, and this will be your, your fifth up there? or My your fifth, fifth and yeah. final year. This actually is your final year? Pretty sure. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of great things happened to me this summer. Mm -hmm. I was separated at birth, too. Mm -hmm. I got my name in TV Guide last week. 33 across, the SNL puzzle, yeah. star, <laughs> Blank Hartman. Uh, I, was, I was just signed to appear on Sesame Street, my favorite show, yeah. because of... Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So you're, you feel like it may be time to take a, a step into... But I also sold NBC on my own show, which I'll be doing next year. Congratulations. Will it be, will it be the Phil Hartman show? <laughs> Phil Hartman, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back here with uh, Connie Gordon. Our first guest is a very funny and talented uh, writer and performer who can be seen weekly on the Saturday Night Live program. Look at this man at some of the wonderful and amusing things he does on a weekly basis. All right, here he is, folks, Phil Hartman. Good to see you. Thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. <laughs> How you doing? How's the big show going? How many years have you been part of the cast up there? I'm starting year six. Wow, that's great, isn't it? It is great. Yeah. I, I just finished my 95th show. Congratulations. Thank you. And it's, it was every bit as exciting as the 93rd show. Wow. <laughs> uh, and and uh, let's see, the first week it was uh, Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, yeah, well, that must have been interesting, fun. What was that? I've never been more excited yeah. about a, a host, frankly. And he's such a sweet man. Yeah. You know, it's kind of surprising. He's, <laughs> I'd even say he was an ultra warm, touchy feely kind of a guy. Really? You know, just <laughs> hugging people, yeah. lifting him up, kissing him on the forehead. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was neat. Yeah, well, that's good. And then we had Jeff Daniels, a fine actor, yeah, fine who actor. delivered a great yep. show. And uh, this week, it's Kirstie Alley. Mm -hmm. And I'm, perhaps you've observed, we have uh, a lot of new cast members. There are now 25 people in the cast. <laughs> and we have 130 featured players. <laughs> and, uh, but it's great because... Well, after 95 shows, I kind of feel like, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, like a father figure. Uh, I took the kids uh, for a tour of uh, Rockefeller Plaza. That was, that was nice. Have you ever noticed, you know, the skating rink area? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this time of year, of course, it's an outdoor restaurant. It's a restaurant, sure. And uh, did you ever notice that that skating rink is surrounded by the flags of every nation? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've noticed that there were a lot of flags, and I, I think probably I could have told you it was, yeah, every nation, yeah. Okay, well, did you know <laughs> that the flags of every nation are surrounded by the hot dog vendors of every nation? Uh, <laughs> you're probably right about that as well. <laughs> it's, it's our own little plaza of Babel. <laughs> and it's, you know, if you haven't had a hot dog on the streets of New York, you really must try them. Because not only are they delicious, but they're one of the most powerful laxatives known to man. <laughs> Especially with that. <laughs> sauerkraut that was aged in the back of someone's car. You know? <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's talk about something a little more pleasant than the, the hot dogs and the sauerkraut. The last time you were on, you're talking about your uh, your family a little bit and your your son, who is now I guess uh, three years old or so. Three and a half. Yeah. yeah. How, how, what, does, now does he is he at an age where well I don't know that he would want to be staying up that late to see you on TV, but he's seen you. He must have seen you on on tapes and television. Yeah, someplace. he's seen me on TV. Yeah. Sometimes he requests me. Uh, I, I played uh, Captain Carl on Pee Wee's Playhouse, so he, he's seen me there. But I, I think because we videotape him so much, he thinks everybody's on TV. Yeah. See, I think that that's probably <laughs> going to happen to an entire generation You're, of folks. Uh, that's absolutely the truth. And. Uh, I had a great summer because I, I pretty much took the summer off and mm -hmm. I got to spend a lot of time well, with them. Yeah, and it, 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 was, it was wonderful. Well, you know, we were out in California, which I like. I don't want to hype people on California because it's certainly no paradise. Yeah. I mean, it's smoggy and crowded. And 
Frankly, there are altogether too many guys with that little ponytail haircut, you know? I, I, I really don't get that. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a critical person. I don't want to... Actually, it does come in handy if you have two of them, they can pull you around on rollerblades, yeah. you know? Which is good, but it's, it's like, I, I feel like at some point... Well, look at the band members. They're all the hippest guys in, in music. Uh -huh. Sid, you don't have a ponytail thing in the back? No. Paul doesn't? No. And you just got to let go of the 60s at some point and move forward. But it's like, a, it's like the fake out haircut, you know, when they're coming at you. It's like, hey, I'm a normal guy. No, I'm totally cool. <laughs> no, I, I don't... <laughs> but that's me, you know. Last time I was here, I was complaining about those uh, cowboy boots that have the metal cap on yeah. the toe. Like, I'm a yeah. cowboy, I'm a robot. Oh, what am I? I, I guess I, I have a... I have a problem with that, and that's my problem. I'll get over it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I don't think it actually is a problem. I've wondered about that, too, because the ponytail was here, and then it went away. And then, like, you're, like you say, now it's sort of back. And guys can, can slip into it easily and readily when you don't know it. Yes, you, you can spot guys who ponytail themselves on weekends. It, exactly. Yeah, that's a little right. clip on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, we, uh, we have to do a commercial, and we'll be back with the uh, thoughtful introspective <laughs> part. Tonight, also uh, Belinda Carlisle. You you know Belinda? Boy, do I. Yeah, she's a lovely, <laughs> lovely woman, a very nice woman, and uh, well, formerly one of the Go Go's. I yeah. knew her when she was a Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also on the uh, program tonight, uh, Jimmy Breslin. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the other stuff you do when when you're not doing a Saturday Night Live. Well, sailing. Is oh my, yeah, is yeah. my big love. We How long have you been a sailor? Do you come from a sailing family? No, uh, actually, I, I, I have one, you know, I, I'm one of eight kids, mm -hmm. and I have one sister and another brother who are avid ocean people mm -hmm. who were surfers in Southern California, but uh, no, that's about it. But I, I just, I'm in love with the sea. You see, Dave... <laughs> <laughs> would, would you like some music? <laughs> Could I have some bubbles? <laughs> oh, boy, <laughs> just say the word. We'll heat that right up there. You see, Dave, the sea is like a woman. <laughs> Sometimes she's passive and submissive. Sometimes she rises with fury and power. <laughs> she can make you feel very small. Of course, there's the constant nagging and belittling. The repeated accusations that you've been with another body of water. <laughs> which is ridiculous, because I only sail the Pacific. I did have that one little fling with Long Island Sound, but... Uh, I. I I'm not proud of it. No. I felt filthy afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I'm turning off the bubble. And then uh, scuba diving, which mm -hmm. I saw. Yeah. You got you to gotta get into a woman to yeah. really know her. And, now, uh, do you, you combine the two? You, you sail out to a place yes. and dive and then sail home? Yes, the, the, the offshore islands in Southern California are the best part of Southern California. There's no people there. They haven't changed since Juan Cabrillo yeah. went there and started giving the natives diseases and things. <laughs> <laughs> and, by the way, are you watching this Columbus thing on PBS? You know. Oh, man, it's great. Yeah, that's what oh, I hear. It's really great. Should I be watching it? Yeah, I, well... Do you like the sea as a woman, or just as a... Get back to the bubbles here. Yeah. Uh, no. People don't like scuba, though, because it's the only sport where you can get swallowed whole. Yeah. And, um, but I, I think it's great because, you know, it, it's, it's like a parallel universe. You go underwater, and, and the animals are so friendly, they come right up to you. They'll eat out of your hand, and, and there's no equivalent to that. I mean, you can walk through Central Park. The people will eat out yeah. of your hand. But, <laughs> The animals stay away. They, they hide. But, uh, see, I have a problem with that. I, I've, uh, I've done some snorkeling. Not a lot, but some. And I always feel just as happy after spending an hour snorkeling if I haven't seen anything. That makes me just as happy as if I have seen something. Well, that's true. Snorkeling is, uh, snorkeling is about 80% as much fun as scuba diving. Yeah. yeah, but don't you worry about something that might go for you or uh, sever your air hose or something? 
Oh, you know, only bef beforehand, like the night before, I feel like a fool and I cower naked in my bunk, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, but while I'm down there, I've done night dives, yeah. deep dives, yeah. wreck dives. Uh, what's, the, what's the deepest you've uh, been? 580 feet. Really? It was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I fell overboard one night. I had, uh, I was, this was years ago. I was wearing those platform uh -huh, shoes, yeah. you know, and they just, boom, yeah. straight to the bottom. <laughs> A lot of change in the pockets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. This, this week you mentioned it's, uh... Kirstie uh, Alley. Oh, that's right, Kirstie Alley. And, uh, musically, who will be up there? Uh... I'm going to have a shot at it myself. <laughs> I just, well, good for you. I haven't talked to the producers about oh, it. Oh, well, it'll be a, a little double treat for everyone tuning in. Nice to see you again, Phil. Thanks, Thanks for joining Dave. us. Phil Hartman, and uh, we'll be right back. Well, Phil, uh, Now, the fun officially begins. All right. <laughs> Our first guest, a very entertaining uh, writer and uh, performer who is uh, currently in the middle of his sixth season on Saturday Night Live. It seems like only yesterday he was joining the cast of that television program. I can't program. believe he's been yep, on there in the for middle six years. of his sixth year up there at Saturday Night Live. Watch this videotape and you'll see some of what he does each week. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Phil Hartman. If you start goofing around, you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> it's Tom Foolery. <laughs> hey, accidents on the that game. was that was quite a show business entrance there. <laughs> Why, whatever do you mean, Dave? Well, yeah, you come out there, you're you're kind of dancing, and and this is a little odd for you, isn't it? I mean, not odd. It's a nice looking jacket, but it's a little. Oh, you're different. referring to the new look. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the, the bloated middle-aged father of two thing wasn't working out for me, so... Uh, I got a kind of a Phil Dice Hartman thing going, yeah? Uh, kind of a wild one, way cool. But, you know, you never want to look too cool, right? Yeah. So, hence... What, what's the last thing you would expect to see on the back of a black leather jacket? Um, a, uh, a chart for the Heimlich Maneuver. I hate to admit it, Dave, but I think you're right. Well, I, I went for the second uh, last thing. It, wouldn't it quite possibly be this? Wow. Edwin. Yes, Edwin. Edwin. Who, who used to do a radio program out of this very building, mm -hmm. this very network. Yeah, very, very funny, talented comedian, actor. Yeah. I think he would have been a good choice to play the wild one. <laughs> if Brando couldn't do it, you know, it's like, what are we rebelling against? What are you doing? <laughs> hey, slow down! Uh, the sweetest damn crowd in show business. Because <laughs> you know that was weak. Yeah, no, that was fine. Now, where... <laughs> where <laughs> Where did this come from? Is this something that this you... This was given to me by a fan, believe That's it or not. Right. That's, That's the honest nice. truth. I was in Maui, in Lahaina, and there's a guy in Maui named Bud the Birdman. Ah. He, he's on Front Street, and he has 12 parrots. And you come up, and, he, he, and he'll take your picture with 12 parrots on you. <laughs> and uh, I ran into him. I, I, I did the parrot number on the street uh, one day, and then I ran into him in a restaurant, and he was wearing this. And I said, man, that's a great jacket. And he said, here, it's yours. Wow. And... Um, of course, you know, like you want to wear one of these in Maui anyway, right? He was dying. But uh, I said, yeah, I'll take it and save your life. But um, 
Anyway, yeah, actually, well, it looks very nice. Now let's yeah. let's talk about uh, your versatility as a comedic performer. You do I am it, the man of a thousand. Yeah, voices. that's what I was going to point out. You do an awful lot of voices, don't you? Yes. Could I you do. demonstrate some of the voices? Well, the uh, pick, a, pick a number. I between, call out any number. Yeah, one, between one and a thousand. All right. Uh, well, uh, obviously, let's start with one. Well, that's my natural voice. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. What's him doing right now? No, all right. It goes I'm like this. So it goes like it goes like this. <laughs> well, that's my natural voice. Yeah, that would be the voice. <laughs> the one I'm doing right now. Yeah. Now, when, when do we get into the catalog? Would that be like? Well, okay, so you're going to move on. All right, num number number two. Uh, number two is uh, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Yeah, this yeah. week it's Michael Caine, yeah. one of my favorite actors. Very appealing actor. And uh, there's a trick to doing Michael Caine. If you want to speak like Michael Caine. You must only say a few words at a time. <laughs> All right, we, we, we have over 900 more to go, so we'll, we'll do a commercial. We'll be right back with uh, Phil Hartman. And uh, Michael yeah. Lerner, this is not a this is not a bad show at all, is it? Pure entertainment, <laughs> first class. Uh, now, uh, should we continue on with voices? Or you want to talk about other matters? I don't know. I uh, do uh, just a couple more voices. Uh, okay, uh, give me a number. Uh, Eighteen. Uh, Walter Brennan. <laughs> So give me they're, another they're, number. They're not in alphabetical <laughs> order, then I see. No. Yeah. no, there's no rhyme or reason uh. to it, really. In fact, to be perfectly honest. It's not really a thousand, Dan. <laughs> is there? It's is, more like a hundred. Are you? Are you? A hundred, man of a hundred voices. That sounds kind of. Oh, yeah, well, that's pretty good. Are you always adding voices? Always. Yeah. Well, you know, now I got Bill Clinton. Yeah. Let's hear that. Oh, we saw a little uh, bit earlier. Well, you didn't know, we? Bill Clinton. If if he wins, talk about job security, Dave. I'll be <laughs> I'll be on Saturday Night Live another four years. But he's got some good <laughs> ideas. I think we should vote for him, right? I, <laughs> okay, maybe. But have you seen his new promos? Nope. A vote for me puts you in the sweepstakes of the, of the Bill Clinton award-giving his and hers Corvettes, just like the ones Hillary and I drive. <laughs> he's, he's got some novel ideas. Yeah. He, uh, he looks like the first guy you would see at the fraternity house homecoming morning. <laughs> he's right there by the keg, ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised how much I looked like, and we're both the same amount overweight, you know. So just put that wig on, bingo! <laughs> uh, let's 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 talk a, a little bit about your, uh, your new baby. Hey, new baby girl! Congratulations! Quite a thrill. There's nothing. There's nothing more wonderful, and 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 my wife and I are very excited. We're pretty sure we'll be able to sell her. No. Oh. <laughs> You say that, you know? know? That sounds like a guy who hasn't had a good night's sleep in six weeks, Dan. <laughs> I think that was... <laughs> that might have been the jacket talking. <laughs> Is it tough, the first six weeks? Well, since my wife carries the, mam the mammalian responsibility in our family, it's tougher on her. Yeah. I, I, I have to... Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're, 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 we're going for the breastfeeding approach. Yeah. Um, it's medically proven to be good and um and the baby's doing it too uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> and uh still into my boats oh yeah i was gonna ask you about sailing yeah you know i bought a new sailboat and now have a powerboat and a sailboat yeah that's good but my favorite thing is is to take the powerboat and run up to Point Doom, where uh, yeah. Johnny lives. I used to Johnny live Carson. in that neighborhood. You don't live there anymore? No, I don't live there you anymore. You know, Johnny Carson has this big house on a cliff. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I've got this powerboat, and I go up there, and I drop anchor. And in the middle of the night, I get on a bullhorn, and I go, Yes! <laughs> you are correct, sir. Oh, great one. <laughs> so, he, he gets out his bathrobe. We're running low on Alpo and Budweiser, oh funk master. Send the shoreboat out. 
<laughs> it bugs him, but... <laughs> you know, you have children. <laughs> Look at you, sitting there like that, saying those things. You have children. It's a frightening, frightening thought. <laughs> Uh, well, and then the little guy, you know, he's he's just a ball with the baby. Yeah. You know, he he he. How old he, is he? He's three and a half. Yeah. And he went to school, and he and we found out he told this story. He got up at show and tell, and he said, "A plane came and brought a little girl to my house, <laughs> and she stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed." That's very and cute. Stayed. Yeah. You, you told the kid that FedEx brought the baby. <laughs> Uh, and the big show this weekend. How are things going there now? Excellent. How about Mary Stuart Masterson? Yeah. And In Vogue. Yeah. Good, Good show. show. Yeah. How yeah. many more do you have before you're finished for the year? Uh, four more after this one. And then in the fall, you're coming back for your seventh season with them. That's right. Oh, yeah. Good for you. Nice to see you, Phil. Congratulations on everything. Phil Hartman. Let's bring out our uh, first guest. We have a lot to talk to this man about. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll bring Phil Hartman out hey, here in a second. He is uh, an accomplished performer and uh, writer. He's been, huh? What? I saw someone, uh, someone was hooting. Who was hooting? Was that you? No. Well, what the hell was that for? I don't know Please what. don't hoot. Uh, he's in his seventh, he's in his seventh season up there on uh, Saturday Night Live. Boom! Uh, thank you. Wow! Here, now, take a look at some of uh, Phil Hartman's work on Saturday Night Live. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Phil Hartman. Look, we have similarly uh, colored jackets. How about that? Drab is the color of the <laughs> yes, season. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who's cooler than we are? Ain't a single person out there, Dave. <laughs> Phil, nice to see you. Let me ask you how you are, how was your summer, and then I want to get right to the other thing. Okay. Well, it's always a pleasure to be on Good. the greatest television show <laughs> in modern television history. And because television is a modern invention, I guess we could say Late Night with David Letterman is the greatest television show of all time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Dave, that's just about right. I know, I know you want to bide me showering praise on you personally. I'll take a little of it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that because you're a modest man, and I think you prefer not to be singled out. But there are elements of this show that I think it's time we called attention to. Right. First of all, the new opening. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Closest thing to an acid flashback I've had in about 20 years. I want to mention the writing on the show, too, Dave, yeah. <laughs> because, um, well, it's first class. Mm -hmm. And what is truly admirable to me is your policy that you use to hire writers, this whole idea of taking troubled youth off the street. <laughs> well... Damn it, it's about time somebody cared. <laughs> Dave, you give them a sense of belonging. I don't have to tell you, you know this. This man is the Father Flanagan of late night television. Thank you very much. Okay, enough. I, I feel like we're pushing this. You, uh, you couldn't use a blister pack of artificial warts for your show, could you? <laughs> Can't do it. You know why? Why? Allergies, dude! <laughs> Thank you. That's that writing I was talking about. Oh. Oh. Now, what I want to know about is tell us everything you know, everything you saw about this uh, Sinead O'Connor situation on your show Saturday night. Sinead O'Connor comes out, sings the song, tears up the picture, and uh, the place goes crazy. Yeah, well, the press covered it. it. It was a quick change on her part. She had held up a picture of a child. Oh, that's different. On air, <laughs> she pulled this number. I was hurt and offended. I don't know if anybody noticed, but I refused to get on stage with her at the end of the show. And I'll That's tell you the why. first thing I noticed, That's... Phil. <laughs> Listen. I don't, 
I don't push my political agenda on anybody else. I don't object to her for her feelings. I mean, this is a very volatile issue, especially in her country, uh, the whole idea of women's rights. But she killed the comedy on that show in the last half hour. That is unforgivable to me. Plus, I don't want to ignore the fact that I was brought up in a large Catholic family. Is that right? How, yes. how many folks in the family? Uh, my parents. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> Uh, eight, nine, ten kids, whatever it was, the last count. But we were taught from childhood, you do not tear up a picture of the pontiff. If you have a choice between doing it and not doing it, what you do is not. Yeah, that's right. right. So, and in school, you know, similarly, the nuns taught us with the catechism, you do not put Hitler mustaches on the Twelve Apostles. No. You, you, you do not drip you know, goat's blood on a stack of Perry Como albums. It's, it's, you know, there's just things all, you don't do. It's all yeah. spelled out It's early. spelled out very yeah. clearly. So for me, as an erstwhile Catholic, this is like, oh, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, I'm angry. Right. I was very angry after the show, hence I didn't get up. And now I, I feel an urge for vengeance. Uh, what I'm going to do is when she does a concert in New York City, if she has the guts to ever do a concert in New York City again, after one of her songs, I'm going to jump up on stage and tear up a photo of Uncle Fester. <laughs> we'll see how she feels. Uncle Fester. <laughs> or, or Curly Howard, or Mr. Clean, or uh, Phil, uh, do me a favor if you can. Hey, we have pretty much the entire show that you're doing Saturday night right here on our show tonight. We have yourself and, of course, the guest star, Joe Pesci. How's he working out up there? Well... I wouldn't look in the trunk of his car if I were you. <laughs> All right, let's do a commercial. I don't know what that means. Well, and there's... Remember Goodfellas? Oh, yeah. Mm. And we'll be back here with Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman, as you can see with your own two eyes, has joined us this evening. A little bit later, <clears throat> the uh, guest star of his program, Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live, Joe Pesci, will be with us. And a very funny young man, Jeff Stilson, will be out here a bit later. Where were we? What the hell were we talking about? Well, well uh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. you. You work here in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, you live still in California. That's right. All right. Now, where have you made a larger group of friends? Here, or is it a bunch of big-shot Hollywood phonies out there in California? <laughs> well, actually, my best friends uh, out there are the Hollywood phonies I met on our shows. <laughs> uh, well, how I, I, terribly Dana convenient. Dana Carvey and I are neighbors, and we hang out a lot with John Lovitz, and uh, I do a lot of sailing. Uh, uh, oh, of course, I'm very close to Ed McMahon now. Congratulations. Yeah, now, how did, that, that. how did that happen? It was a... Well, you know, the Ed... <laughs> there it is. The Ed McMahon phenomenon is sort of sweeping around the country, as you know. I'm not going to you know, make a big deal about it, but He's... everyone is saying, yes, you are correct, sir, and hey oh, uh, It's sweeping around the Pacific uh... Rim. In Japan, they say, hey, do you want me hey In Germany, it's, jawohl, ich stich lieben hey Italy, si, da je mananzo, hey You know, notice that all the former Axis powers are getting on the band. Wagon, and we hope that it'll spread around the world community and uh all it's thanks a very to you thing. Yeah, yeah and so so uh, one of the just the, the side benefits is that i got now, to meet ed are you spending more him. time with him now you say a lot of time yeah is that was fun it, yeah it's fun like, yeah. he's a terrific guy and he's taught me about drinking right. which i you know i was never really <laughs> i i kind of kind of went with that attitude oh no carnage on the highways broken home <laughs> stay away ooh. but man has taught me how to power drink and slug it down and whoa! <laughs> you open up! It's the best! You open up emotionally and you share things. I mean, he told me things about himself. I didn't know about the whole feud between him and Doc all these years. Yeah, I know, I didn't. Yeah, because, you know, uh, you know how Johnny used to always make fun of Doc's clothing? Yeah. And, well, it turns out whenever Ed did it, you know, and commented on his smart and said, hey, who shot the coach? <laughs> you know, Doc would get upset and have this big feud and then Doc found out that Ed had a fear of sharks. Uh -huh. And, and so Doc hired some guys to capture a great white shark, and they put it in a water tank, and they took it up to Ed's house in Bel Air, and they got a bunch of Teamsters <laughs> to make a harness and carry the shark up, and Ed's in his backyard sitting by the pool having a snort, and he, he turns around, honey, is that, hey, oh! <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> and, and unfortunately, he had his wits about him. He took a, a case of Budweiser, threw it in the shark's yeah. mouth, and the shark butt down, and the thing exploded like uh -huh. in Jaws. It was, oh, great. we had... We had shark steaks all summer. And you, you're saying you're saying Teamsters actually transported the shark. Yeah, it, it was is you know, a union, union job. Union if you're going to be doing that, shark absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> now we're with you, fellas. <laughs> you you've been you've been drinking a little today, haven't you? you? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to do it. I seem different to you. Everything's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm okay, because I... No, the thing is, you don't drink every day. So that's a trick. <laughs> you don't drink every day. You drink one day. Right. All day. <laughs> and then, take two... Couple of days off. One day off. Yeah. <laughs> You have to stagger it. You yeah, have to pace yeah, yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And don't move on your day off. No. Don't try to move. Don't... <laughs> ah! you know, it really hurts. Uh, the big show Saturday. Uh, yourself, everybody else. Joe Pesci, who Joe I Pesci, must say. Spin Doctors. Yes, yeah, Spin Doctors. Great band. Joe Pesci, one of the greatest character mm -hmm. actors of our gener generation. And I'm very excited about it. All right, well, we're very excited to have had you down here our own selves. Phil, good to see you again. Phil. Allergies, dude! Hello, I'm Joe Pesci, and I'm hosting Saturday Night Live this week. During my career, I've worked with such great names as Mel Gibson and Robert De Niro. Now I've got these two idiots. Who has more fun on their little TV talk show than we do right no here? No one, Dave! That was that was cult like. Uh, you know. Yeah. Uh -oh. Not only is it entertaining, but I'm reducing while I do it. The pounds are just melting away. You know, kids. For the past seven seasons, our first guest has been a uh, principal member of the fine ensemble cast upstairs at Saturday Night Live. Here, take a look now at this man at work, Phil Hartman. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Phil Hartman. You know, Phil, you you could be the hardest working man in show business. I was watching I was watching your program one weekend, and it was ninety percent you. You were in everything. That might have been the Luke Perry show. I got a lot of mileage out of that one. <laughs> nice to see you. Well, I can't tell you how happy I am to be here. Uh, we're, we're always always happy to have you here. Um, you know, Dave, the last time I was here. Um, I complimented you on certain elements of the show. Yes, and I appreciate it. It was very flattering of you. Thank you. Well, as you'll recall, I mentioned uh, I admire your writing staff and your whole policy of acquiring writers by hiring troubled youth off the street. <laughs> Covenant House, right yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Father Flanagan of late night television. <laughs> this time I wanted to mention another element that is very special on All the right. show, and that is your producer, Robert Morton. Bob Morton. Sure. There he is. Yeah. Can you imagine what it's like to produce this show? This man lives in a whirlwind of decision making and problem solving. I mean, who's the guy when Cher cancels? Who's the guy who calls the insect lady in the middle of the night and says, can you come in and schmoozes with guest after guest at Orso's? And then he has to decide, oh, was it the pasta pomodoro or the Greenpoint mussels or the Chablis or the Zinfandel or the, you know, the creme brulee yeah. or the tofuti? This is the man who does it. And the I... only man producing television today with a prison haircut. And I say that because... <laughs> You must be, uh, are you happy that Bill Clinton won the election? Because that's, that's kind of like your signature now. You, you do all of the Clinton work up there. Well, Dave, you know, along with being the fake president, <laughs> comes a lot of fake responsibility. 
I, uh, I know that the American people look to me uh, for a certain amount of ersatz inspiration. Uh, <laughs> And, and I take this bogus mandate from the people very seriously. Uh, I, I don't want to let anybody down. Yeah. I'm happy to say that, that one perk out of, out of impersonating Mr. Clinton is that we become very fast friends. No, that's not true. Yes, it is, Dave. Is it really? Yes, we, I guess, we what the young people call hang together. Uh -huh. is, that, is that the term you use? <laughs> We hang together. <laughs> uh, I shuttle down to Washington every chance no, I get. No, you don't. Yes, I do, no, Dave. Now go along with me on this one. You're yourself now. <laughs> no, we, uh, we spend a lot of time together. We sneak out of the White House and hit the local watering holes. As a matter of fact, we do it incognito in unfrozen caveman lawyer makeup. <laughs> And the first time we met, we met at midnight at the Lincoln Memorial. Mm -hmm. He sat on one knee, I sat on the oh, other. Oh, that's cute. That's nice. <laughs> Very tender. And he, he shocked me somewhat for his candor. He yeah. confided in me. He said, you know, Phil, I have to tell you this because <laughs> sooner or later you're going to find out. 25 years ago at Oxford University, I did inhale. Oh. I had a bong in my dorm room the size of a grain silo. <laughs> I smoked everything I could get my hands on. Maui Waui tie stick, banana peels, lawn clippings. He said, heck, I'm kind of re wrecked right now. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Then he was wrecked. Oh, my God. He was God. really messed up, apparently, when he came up with that economic strategy. <laughs> you know how hard it is to do math when you're uh, uh, and Incidentally, I, I oppose the use of drugs of any kind. Oh, uh, well, good. Good I, for you. You know, a little coffee, occasional case of beer. That's yeah. it for me. I, an occasional case, like, for the week? A case for the month? Well, you know, we can talk later about how I <laughs> distribute it. You, by the way, I think you have distinguished yourself here tonight in one other regard. You, I believe, are the first person ever in the history of this program to use the word ersatz. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Nicely done. Is that, is that right? Er, ersatz? Ersatz. Ersatz, yeah. It means... Fake. There you go. We, uh, we have to do a commercial, and when we come back, I want to, you're still a man of a thousand voices, right? That's right. Oh, great. Maybe we can hear a couple. We'll continue, kids. Phil Hartman is here, James Brown will join us, and also the, uh, the, lovely, the lovely and talented uh, Rachel Hunter. Now, Phil, I, I, I guess people know this, maybe unofficially, that you, uh, it, it only adds up that you would be the man of a thousand voices. But literally, you do a thousand different voices. That's right. And occasionally when you're on the show, <laughs> you ask me to pick a number, right? Yes, yeah, so between one and a thousand, of course. All right. Not number one, Dave, because that's my. We natural just heard that voice, one. Yeah, right. that's. Nice. Well, so strictly speaking, you're kind of cheating on that, aren't you? A little bit. Nine. Yeah. Hundred and nine. Nine ninety nine. Okay, let me let me pick a number. Uh, to twenty eight. Twenty eight is twenty eight is Paul Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Colonel Hall from the Belko show? Yes, I do. A fine character. All right, Belko is Doberman. <laughs> <laughs> I use that same voice. Uh, I, I did uh, 65 episodes of Dennis the Menace cartoon show, and I used that voice for Mr. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, yeah. So All right, Mitchell, where's Dennis? So this is such a stretch. So, so 20 of course, uh, 29 would be Phil Silvers. Well, I certainly don't know where Doberman is. Uh. <laughs> Very good. Now, that, that answers my other question. Apparently, they're not in alphabetical order, then. No, certainly no. not. Are you going to try another one? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, 82. Oh, well, you now you're getting up there. <laughs> 82 is one I'm working on, um, a good friend of yours, Charles Grodin. Oh, that, now that's tough. What? He, he is tough. Yeah. I, I'm not sure I've got it, but, but close your eyes. <laughs> Does this sound like him? Beethoven, get off of the couch. Oh, look, he's slobbering all over yeah. everything. Very good. Uh, 
And I'm guessing if you can do that, you probably do a little Jack Benny because there is a similarity there, isn't there? There is, you yeah. know. Uh, he really has a similar Try a quality. Jack Benny, can you? Well, you know, Dave, it's there wonderful to be go. here. Exactly. Knocking him dead, Matt. <laughs> He's probably... I would, I would someday love to portray Jack Benny. Um, I think we resemble each other somewhat. When yeah, I so some facial back. resemblance yeah, and, and, and mannerisms? Yeah. And he, he was surely the sweetest soul in show business. And so. unbelievably funny. If you, yeah, I, I, yeah, the last those. couple of weeks, I was actually listening to some of his old radio shows. Yeah. I, and they are, you think, well, they're going to sound old, they're going to sound silly, but they don't. They sound new and funny and uh, smart and sharp, and it's great. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your film. Speaking of stuff that's unbelievable, the CB40. CB4? CB4. CB40 is the car wax. <laughs> this, this thing is like the biggest blockbuster uh, film since Wayne's World all of a sudden. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's the number one movie right yeah. now. And last weekend with the storm hitting the eastern seaboard, it, it probably would have done a lot better. I'm sure this weekend will be, will be quite great. Oh, Burn your animals I on staff now, Dave. I don't know. It did. It sounded like someone sneaking a pig in or out of the studio. Uh, I'm very happy for Chris Rock, uh, my buddy uh, upstairs, because he he opened the movie. He's fantastic in the film. Mm -hmm. It's a very funny movie. And if you are an African American between the ages of 18 and 24, like Dave the Band and me, <laughs> I know. Well, you've probably already seen it. Uh, and and uh, this weekend, the uh, the guest host on uh, your Miranda show? Richardson, yeah. who is just a sublime actress from Damage, uh, uh, The Crying Game. And she was on Black Adder television series, too. But she's our host with Soul Asylum on Music. R related to Ralph Richardson? Yeah, just that's, just that's took a, a good shot. question. Just took a shot. I'm going to ask. I'm going <laughs> to check into that. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Phil. Thanks, Congratulations on everything. Holyfield, a very nice man. Lovely guy. Uh, did you happen to see the fight? It was a great fight. A lot wow. of action, a lot of excitement, and, and it's good to see him get it back. It's nice. It's a, it's a great story uh, from the world of sports. And now here's the weather. <laughs> uh, for the past eight seasons, our next guest has delighted adults and children alike with his fine ensemble work on the television program Saturday Night Live. Ladies and gentlemen, here now, take a look at this man in action on that very same program. feels so good, Dave. It must be a gratifying feeling for you. It's very gratifying. Yeah. You know, I was, I was the fourth of eight children. I really didn't get a lot of attention. Um, I said, could, could you do me a favor? C could I make one more entrance? And, 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 and Hal, could you really push that applause machine? And, and guys, really play your hearts out. And audience, I want you to cheer like I was the heavyweight champion. I, I'm just going to... Che cheer like you're getting free Wonder Bread. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to run to the back and make an entrance from the back of the field. All right. He's going to try it again. All right. This ought to be... <laughs> it's uh, nice of Phil to take time out of his softball coaching responsibilities. <laughs> Are we all set for this? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Phil Hartman. Phil!
Yeah, it was nice, nice of you to kiss that young man in the sweatshirt, too, I think. <laughs> You'll never forget that. <laughs> oh, oh. Is that good? Did you enjoy that? <laughs> what? What's the matter? What's wrong? You know, I shouldn't try to fill the void inside me from a neglectful childhood with oh, applause that's, or anything that's else. That's all right. We enjoyed it. Oh, uh, I'm going to have to indulge you one more time. <laughs> okay. Well, Lord knows we got nothing but time here tonight. <laughs> you you want to try another one? Yeah, and this time, Paul, I don't want you guys to play at all. I just got to balance up my Feeling psyche. a little guilty now? Yes, right? it's, yeah. it's guilt because I don't. nobody deserves that kind of adulation. <laughs> oh. Uh, how many people in the audience have a last name that begins with S? Uh, that's, that's too many. Uh, T. Okay, everybody whose last name begins with T, I, when Dave introduces me, I want you to just go like this. <laughs> I want no music, Hal, no applause sign. Okay. Dave, one more, one more time. You, by the way, you better be good when you get out here. <laughs> Man. All right, I guess it's everybody with a last name beginning T responds in kind of an apathetic fashion, if I understand the drill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Phil Hartman. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no, wait, but it's, it's, hey, 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 dear, hey. <laughs> wow, it kind of turned ugly there, didn't it? That's that's just too bad. <laughs> Are you feeling better now? The sick thing is, Dave, it still feels pretty good. <laughs> well, that's any kind of attention. Yeah, uh, good for you because we are out of time. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with Phil Hartman. Here. What can you tell us of yourself? Tell us a little bit about your career. How long have you been on uh, Saturday Night Live? Is it eight years? Yeah, this is my eighth year. That's an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I, I will finish this season with 153 episodes wow. uh, under my belt, and that's a record. And you get to keep those, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, everyone. I didn't get to keep mine. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then, will you? Are you considering? I know you do a lot of film work in the off season. Do you have other things in mind? Well, I'm going to do my own show for NBC, uh, the Phil Show, which will be a sketch comedy show. And I, I was out in California last week meeting with potential producers and writers, and uh, we're going to try to mount it next year. So you're talking about an hour-long weekly kind of sketch half comedy hour break? sketch comedy yeah. show. 9 p.m. ish kind of thing. And well, if there's anyone who can do it and make it work, it's you. You're just the best at that. Oh, thanks. Bro. Gee, well, I only need 40 more million people like you, Dave. <laughs> and, but, you know, if that, but I got backup plans galore. Oh, know, really? Well, you have to have a contingency. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, it's a crapshoot television. There's no guarantees. <laughs> and uh, one, a thing I've always thought about doing is a one man show on that Broadway. That would be great. You'd be perfect. Oh, Broadway, what theater? Well, not in a theater. I'm talking about standing out in Times Square, you oh. know, <laughs> yelling at people, lurching out at cats. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> A lot of guys are doing it. It's not that original. <laughs> yeah. But you, you'd be very good. I think so, you know. <laughs> yes, you are correct, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it would be effective. <laughs> but, you know, I'm also doing some songwriting. Really? Well, that's uh, good. There's a lot of money in music. Oh, sure, know. yeah. That's where it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I had Thanksgiving at Paul Simon's house. Yeah, Little man, of... big house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so I'm doing some writing. I write about things that I love, like uh, I'm working on a song about snorkeling, which, uh, well, this weekend I, I spent in Catalina Island snorkeling, which is just beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, it's so 
transcendental, Dave. It's like going to another dimension, uh, mind expanding yeah. to be in in the it's water. Other with world the fish. It's otherworldly. Otherworldly. Yeah. And yet it's 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 natural, you know, it's not like dangerous drugs, no. which uh, as we all know are not say well it says dangerous, right? That's right. The, That's the name right. dangerous drugs. That's a clue. The, Get a clue with the Phil. <laughs> the safe drugs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but snorkeling is totally safe and, and I, I wrote a song about it. Uh, you wanna hear? Can we hear? Can May we hear? Did you, have you worked out anything with No, no, uh, guys, I'll do this on my own because it, it's, it's very complex. <laughs> a little too complex for the likes of you. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. A warning label well, on that shirt. No. <laughs> it's, kind of a, it's kind of a jazz fusion thing, and I don't know. All right, all right, we'll stay out of it. Here we go. One snorkel makes you larger, and one snorkel makes you small. You know, so I've got this. At the songwriting thing. <laughs> but apart from that, I'm in big, big trouble, Dave. What's the um, matter? Well, I am, I'll be unemployed next year. Oh, no, things are going to be great. You have a, I think you have a huge future, and you have, you have a friend in the White House. Well, yeah, that's right. I, I, um, I met the president. Yeah. In, in did you hit it off pretty well? Yeah, we did. I, I met him at a fundraiser here in New York. Really a neat guy. Yeah. I must say, we uh, we rapped, we uh, we got high together. No. <laughs> <laughs> snorkeling. <laughs> we went snorkeling together. <laughs> Easy does it. One day at a time, people. <laughs> now, when when you're talking with the president, do you talk like the president back and forth to him? No, I I don't want to embarrass him. I mean, I, I just like to be his his bud, you know. And, and we uh, <laughs> we do hang together. It, you see, I get to see a side of him that other people don't see. Well, sure. Well, that's good. He, he, uh, he's really under a lot of pressure, Dave. Yeah, I can he'll, imagine. He'll that. call me in the middle of the night, and I, I hear this plaintive voice, you know, like, Phil, <laughs> Bill, what's up? <laughs> I'm bumming, man. <laughs> this Somalia thing is a nightmare. <laughs> Bosnia! No. Good, very funny. And uh, James Taylor. Another great show. Another great songwriter. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Phil Hartman. Phil, thank you very much. Nice job. We'll be right back here. here alone. That's it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, for the past eight seasons, our first guest has been entertaining America with his fine work on a wonderful program called Saturday Night Live. Now, he is in a brand new motion picture called Greedy, which opens March 4th. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Screen Idol, Phil Hartman. Phil! Phil Hartman, ladies and gentlemen. Never better, Dave. How are you? Phil, you look a little different. You have something, you have like a, like a little magic marker or something there on your upper lip. It's a drawn-on mustache, Dave. <laughs> Not everybody can pull that off, but on you it looks great, Phil. It's kind of a retro look. You want a light for your cigarette? I know I'm a non-smoker, Dave. <laughs> I'm proud to announce... Uh, that I'm the new spokesperson for the American Tobacco Growers Association. I didn't realize that. Congratulations. And, uh, yes, and I'm the first non-smoker to be granted this opportunity. Uh -huh. I'm very excited about it. You know, the industry is <laughs> in a slump, Dave. These medical reports associating smoking with health risks have really, uh, really hurt us. Uh -huh. At the big summit meeting in Raleigh, North Carolina, it was determined 
that the way to save the industry was to somehow get non-smokers to buy cigarettes. That's brilliant. Hence our new motto, just one pack a week, that's all we ask. And uh, what do you, if you don't smoke, what can you do with that pack a week? I'm glad you asked, Dave. <laughs> Uh, a cigarette can be used in many ways, but for one thing, you just look cool. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> Hello. That is undeniable. <laughs> Some for your kids to remember, you know. Uh, you look sophisticated, you look older. Uh -huh. If you actually want to be older, don't smoke. No, of course not. That wouldn't <laughs> but work. But if you want to look cool. <laughs> yes. It's also, you can, uh, you can be emphatic with it. For example, uh, Hartman, you're fired. End of story. <laughs> or, uh, you can't fire me. I quit. Yeah. I hope you have another good. I'm not through yet, Dave. Now, as you know, smoking's very romantic. Oh, sure. <laughs> You know, when the wife comes downstairs in a stunning new outfit, nothing shows your appreciation better than this move. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Man, and a lie. You look cool, you are cool. You're out to dinner, you want to show her that you're hard-boiled, like a private eye, like a tough really guy. tough guy. Yeah. I'm a sucker for long legs. I'd like to shinny up one of yours like a native boy looking for coconuts. <laughs> That's a tough guy right there. Let's look at the instant replay on that one. Right and uh, my, finally, you've had a wonderful night out on the town. You're both bushed. The wife comes out of the closet in a Victoria's Secret oh, outfit. Yes. You give her one of these. <laughs> Pictures worth a thousand words. <laughs> How long will it take you to get the mustache off? <laughs> I, I might just might leave this on. Yeah. What See, it makes your teeth look whiter. <laughs> I bleach my teeth. I'm not ashamed to say. <laughs> look at that. You want to uh, uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, your family? Did you come from a big family? You have a lot of brothers and sisters. I'm from a big family. Uh, I'm one of eight. My goodness. And uh, you know, uh, it was pretty desperate. Uh, didn't get a lot of attention. Mm. That's why I'm craving it so much now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we uh, one thing. My brothers and sisters and I were quite inventive. We had our own language, and. Um, it was, a, it was a secret language we developed called Egg Latin, and for some reason we could all speak it fluently. And it involved taking the syllable egg and putting it in every syllable of a word before the vowel and after the consonant, like Dave would be Dagave, and, and, and Phil would be Fagil. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't understand this, but that's... Well, I, I, go ahead, give me a sentence, and, and I'll translate it to Egg Latin. Um, uh, my mom had reindeer for lunch. Meg I Megum, Hagad Regan, Degir, Fegger Legunch. I don't know. And we used to uh, we used to use it to say dirty words without getting busted by our parents, like Fagak Yegu! Eggy Shagan, egg ass Hagel! Egg you Fagak Hagan, Shagan Hagan! My goodness. All legal. <laughs> Very impressive. We, uh, we have to do a commercial here. Uh, we'll come back and we'll continue chatting with uh, Mr. Smooth, Phil Hartman, right after this, folks. <laughs> Benson and Michael Madsen.
Let's see, Phil. We were, uh, you know, it seems to me, you know who I, uh, I, uh, I think I met him since you were here was, uh, or, or her, Hillary Clinton. Oh, and, yeah. and I, because you do, uh, her husband, President Clinton, I have this image that you went down to the White House once. Don't you know the president? Haven't you met the guy? Yeah, uh, well, I met him at a fundraiser here in New York, and uh, yeah, he was nice enough. But he, does, he like, does he like what you do? Well, I found out the hard way that he really doesn't like what I do. I, I was invited to perform at the Royal Variety Show, uh, which is a show in London for the Queen and Prince Philip. Raise money for the royal family? Good idea. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and so uh, they, they actually went through the overtures of inviting me, and uh, Robert Earl from Planet Hollywood set it up, and, uh, and I, I was very excited about it, because I have a Clinton act I do, and then it turns out that the Prime Minister's office got concerned uh, because of our long-standing relationship with the United States. We certainly don't want to jeopardize our relationship. And so they called the White House and they went, no, no, not Hartman, no. And so, you know, they put the, uh, they put the kibosh on it and um, it was very disappointing. And I think it's because I've been doing this Clinton act and it's pretty mean. Uh, what kind of stuff? Well, I do this thing where um, I take questions from the audience, and it's uh, it looks like it, a town meeting. Do you do it with a mustache? No, no. <laughs> this is the suave Bill Clinton. <laughs> you look a, a little like Sean Connery there, I notice. You mind if I have a cigarette? <laughs> so, so I, 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 as Clinton, I, I did some, some pretty hurtful jokes like, uh, here's a question. Did you or did you not inhale? Yes, I did inhale. In my dorm room at Oxford University, I had a bong the size of a grain silo. <laughs> I smoked everything I could get my hands on. Maui Wowie, Thai Stick, Humboldt County, Chartreuse, Banana Peels, Lawn Clippings. Hell, I'm kind of wrecked right now. <laughs> But this is the, this is the joke that, that really upset him because it uh, hits him where he lives, I think. In her Penthouse Magazine interview, Jennifer Flowers said, you have a small penis. Hey, hello. Do you? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a small penis. Jennifer Flowers has a big mouth. I'll tell you, I thought you'd think Bill would have a better sense of Oh, that. sure. Oh. And the kind of taxes I'm playing, paying, I, I should be allowed to sucker punch that mega digger fega kegger. <laughs> A feeling you're going to be audited now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Greedy. Tell me about this movie. This is you, Kirk Douglas. Who else is in the film? Oh, my, Michael J. Fox. Michael of course. J. Fox, yeah. Kirk Douglas, Nancy Travis. A really great ensemble, and uh, it's it's really my my movie break. So I'm kind of excited. But you've been in many other big films before. Yeah, I've been in in I've probably done a dozen forgettable, minuscule roles. But this was my first big part, seven weeks' work, and uh, I play the villain in the movie, and it, it was really a lot of fun. Now, and Kirk Douglas is a wealthy guy. He's yeah, got he, a huge estate, a lot of relatives, folks fighting to be in the will. Is that pretty much it? That's it. All right, can we look at a couple of seconds here? Oh, I'd love to. All right, Hal, do me a favor. Roll a couple of seconds here of the film Greedy with Phil Hartman. <laughs> You're doing kind of that smooth guy there a little bit, aren't you? I hope it's a big hit for you, and good luck to you. I understand there's a possibility of you doing your own show in the fall. I hope that goes great. You're, you're just the best, Phil. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for being here. Phil Hartman, ladies and gentlemen. We have to pause for a commercial. We'll be right back. Send that off to Conan O'Brien or John Stewart or somebody. Yeah. Nice of you to do that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for eight years, our first guest delighted and entertained us on Saturday Night Live. Now, 
He's starring in a brand new motion picture entitled House Guest, which opens on Friday. Please welcome back Phil Hartman. There he is. Happy New Year! Welcome back to the program. Thank you so very much for being here. You know you're one of our favorite guests. We always enjoy your appearances and your visits. We like your little wacky anecdotes and your stories and, and your, your comedy shticks. Thanks, Dave. What's the matter with you? Nothing. What's the problem? What, you're upset about something? Did I say something that hurt no, your feelings? No, no, it's nothing. What's the matter? Well, you know... <laughs> I haven't been in New York in seven months. Oh. And I would have expected a more of an enthusiastic welcome. That's okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I know. It doesn't count. Yeah. It doesn't count. You've had the rest. Now go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, you're talking about a little more exciting, exciting introduction? Well, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I did eight years on Saturday Night Yes, Live. sir, you held that thing together, too, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I think, I think what we can do, if you want to go out and make another entrance, I think we can heat this up a little bit for you. That's right, I love to see that smile on your face. You mean that? Yeah, yeah. You, you go out. You go out and then come back in and it'll be much better. All right, we'll okay. try it again. Well, you know, tell him, tell him how much it means to me. Okay, I will. We'll take care of it. There he is. Bill Hartman, ladies and gentlemen. This is, you know, this is great. This is a wonderful opportunity to make a very talented young man a very happy young man as oh, well. Aren't you nice. We're going to do this. Let me know when everything's right. We, we can have a big time, very exciting introduction for our good. It's, you know, it's the very least we can do for this guy. After all the entertainment he's given us, right. the American viewing public. That's nice of you to say. Are we all set? Yeah, we're ready. Is everything in place? Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. Take it away. From Brantford, Ontario, at 5 feet 10 inches tall, 195 pounds, the star of the new motion picture house guest, pound for pound, the funniest man alive. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a warm Ed Sullivan feet of welcome for our first guest, the one, the only, Phil Hartman. What do you think about that, buddy? That's a little better, Dick. <laughs> now, uh, after you've had a little beverage there, what do you want to talk about? Do you miss being on Saturday Night Live? Oh, sure. Yeah, it must have been a lot of fun. Oh, there's so many things about it I miss, Dave. <laughs> well, one thing that uh, springs to mind, I just ran around to Broadway. All right. back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I did yeah, 153 but, episodes. 153? Man, that's a lot of work. Of live, 90-minute television shows. Yep, and yep. every Saturday night, before the show, free catered meal. Wow. <laughs> free catered meal, choice of entrees, salads, breadsticks, desserts. <laughs> you gotta miss that. Do you, do you uh, have free food on this we show? We have cookies. We have cookies and snacks right in there. It's big morale boost. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Uh, How about the camaraderie of the cast members and so forth? All of the sketches and the, the fun that you made of uh, Bill Clinton and like that. No, nah, no, nah, that was a hellhole. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, Lauren Michaels was a nice man. He's the producer for. of the show, the big uh, yeah, man who he, created uh, it. He was the producer. The he was very producer. warm to me. You know, he had uh, box seats at Yankee Stadium. That's great. That's so he wonderful. used to take me to Yankee games. Oh. And, uh, 
It seems every week he would invite an incredibly famous person. Uh, One week, uh, Louis Maul, the French director. He's married to uh, Murphy Brown. Murphy Candace Brown, Morgan. yeah, uh, the, yeah. the sportscaster. <laughs> <laughs> or the uh, newswoman. Yeah, uh, very nice man. But yeah. I, I sat next to him at the game. He didn't understand how baseball worked. He'd be in French. He, yeah, yeah, yeah right, his game, so. sure. So Louis Maul thinks the object of the game is for the pitcher to hit the batter on the head with the ball. No. <laughs> yeah, he does. I explained it to him. And the batter tries to foul tip the ball up over his head into the netting so the guys with the fishnets can snag it. <laughs> you want to go out again? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Have you, uh... Oh, hey, 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 we got to do a commercial. You sit right there, catch your breath, buddy. When we come back, we'll live it up, all right? All right! We're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back here with Bill Hartman. the uh, program, uh, Marv Albert, and uh, Marv has brought uh, his uh, year-long accumulation of the best of the bloopers. You know, oh, he has the wacky that. world of the sports bloopers. Absolutely. We have tonight the compilation of Marv's year-end best all-time blooper package, and uh, Rita Wilson. I bet you know her. Have you met her before? Yeah, well, she's married to Tom Hanks. That's and right. in fact, Rita and I uh, were in the Groundlings together in Hollywood. I didn't realize that. We did a movie together, Cheech and Chong's next movie. We each had little bit parts in that. <laughs> Place is crawling with dopers. <laughs> this audience is baked, man. <laughs> and not a minute too soon. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so with your free time now, uh, because you're not working that regular schedule of doing a show every week, what, have you been uh, relaxing? I've been traveling? having a great time. You know what? I've been training as a pilot. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah, I got 30 hours uh, toward my private pilot's license. Are you enjoying license. it? Uh, I just love it, yeah. Dave. Are you good at it? You've got to be good at it. Well, you have to be good enough yeah. to stay in the air. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I did solo. Uh -huh. You know, that's the, the first big thing you build well, up Well, no, to. not the first big thing. They don't just put you in the plane and let you go. No, no, no. But, but after uh, a minimum of 20 hours of training, yeah. you're allowed to practice landings on yeah. your own. I did that last week. Have you scared yourself yet? I've had a few close calls. Yeah. What, what, a few? <laughs> wow. You're only hours. allowed a few, isn't that right? <laughs> no, it's kind of weird because my, uh, my flight instructor, Dan, is, uh, he's a World War II fighter pilot. Well, that's good. The best. He was the best, yeah. He uh, helped save democracy. Uh, he bailed out over Normandy, and he hit his head on his tail uh -huh. of his plane, and, and he's got a big steel plate in his head, so he's a little... Dodgy, you know. Yeah. I mean, we'll be flying along, and, and I'll look over, and he'll be talking to himself like, "Never leave your wingman. You can't leave your wingman. Bogies <laughs> come out of the sun. How can you see them when they're coming out of the sun?" <laughs> you know, like, Dan. Hello. <laughs> We're flying here. And, and the scariest thing he does, though, he'll, sometimes he he just kind of snaps, grabs the controls, and goes into a powered dive on the bent yeah, the freeway, you know? Yeah, yeah. Eat lead, you Nazi sons of bitches! <laughs> and you know, you can't do that in California, Dave, because the people shoot back. But that, that plate in his head, does it ever foul up the compass? I think that would be trouble. It actually improves my radio reception. <laughs> Well, good for you. But I, I do love flying, and, and it's uh, you know when you were scary. when you were leaving uh, Saturday Night Live. We talked to you. I don't know whenever it was three, four, five months ago. You were talking about going on to, to start your own variety show, the Phil Show. That's right. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I should say that it, it, I actually am going to do a version of it uh, for my son's kindergarten class. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to make a little proscenium out of a cardboard box, and we're, you know, I'll do the funny voices and the characters and sock puppets yeah, and sing-alongs. We'll have snacks afterwards, the free food thing yeah, again. I thought you had, a, like, a deal with a TV network to do this show. Well, what happened was, you see, so many people, talented people, have failed trying to bring variety to prime time. I do you, it every night. <laughs> no, but, no, you're the king of late night, yeah, right? That's your, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're secure. Thank you. About time, sure. You have, 
You had the best show on television. We're not worried about you. Okay, what about me? Um, and, and, and so, you know, well, Martin Short, I had my eye on him. He's a great I'm a guy. Huge fan. Very funny. He's, yeah. He really makes me laugh. And when his show went under, I got scared. I shouldn't say I got scared. Well, for seven weeks, I shivered in the corner naked with the lights out. <laughs> That's not fear. That's not fear. It's yeah. just could have been a logic. virus. Yeah, right. something it could have like been that. A flu bug. Yeah. Uh, and so I, 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 I just decided not to do it. But my friends at NBC, yeah. the Peacock people. You remember them, don't I you, I sure Dave? do. Yes, I yeah. do. It's all in the book. Late <laughs> shift, everybody. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's the guy with the beard and the two tall guy. Okay, you remember. All right, that's it. I don't have to tell you. Uh, no, they, they actually did right by me and steered me into a new show that was created by a former employee of yours, Paul Sims. That's right. Who Used produced work the La Larry Sanders that's show. That's right, with Gary he Shandling. He created a, a show called, uh, well, it's tentatively titled News Radio. Mm -hmm. It's set in a news radio station in Manhattan. And I co-star with Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall, very funny guy, and, uh, and a, it's a great ensemble. Anyway, we filmed the pilot last month. It went great, and it's already been picked up for the fall. Oh, good. Congratulations. We'll look forward to that. No, I'm happy. Yeah. Good for you. you let me see. Do we, I know now you're a man of a thousand voices. Let me just see. Do we have time for him to do one voice? If I pick a number from one to a thousand, I know you're not, it's now a man of a million voices. Yeah. Uh, let me just pick one number. You do the voice. You do the course. Well, number voice. between one and a million. One and a million. I thought I was going to do. All right. This is uh, 207. Look at this. That's Bill Clinton. <laughs> he was bumped from number three when Congress uh, yeah. got. <laughs> you know, Dave. Uh, the Republicans, my opponents, have had a lot of fun after my hunting trip this week, uh, <laughs> making all those lame duck president jokes. Uh, but I went hunting for a reason. I wanted to show the NRA that you can enjoy the sports of the field without using an automatic assault weapon. And I want you to know that every one of the three ducks I bagged, I brought down by shooting them in the right wing. Good to see you, Phil. Thanks, Dave. Have a happy 1995. And you, sir. Good luck in the air. Phil Hartman, folks. We'll be right back. For eight years, our first guest performed his heart out on a television program called Saturday Night Live, and now he stars in news radio, which can be seen elsewhere. <laughs> Please welcome one of TV's funniest stars, Phil Hartman. Phil! Under the broadcast, man, that's a great looking suit. You look like a million bucks, buddy. Nice going. You yeah, got a suit, sometimes you got a vest. slum down when I come uh, here. I thought I'd treat great. you with a little side. You're a handsome guy, aren't you? I pretend to be. <laughs> I can also look quite homely. Uh, anybody can do this. You can take a hundred points off your IQ by flopping your ears over like this. Yeah. And jet your jaw for it. <laughs> See? 165. 65. <clears throat> so it's all relative. I'm a character comedian. I don't have to be cute. <laughs> and you do that all with or without a tie. <laughs> That's right. Uh, how you doing? What's new with Good. you? Good. I, I mean, I hope we're not preempted tonight. Uh, well, no, I don't think so. Because of the news. I mean, I'm not a big media hound myself, yeah. but as I understand it, this uh, former football player gets in a car chase. Uh, he's got uh, he's backseat driving. Yeah. Uh, got a gun to his head or a bag of beards or something. Who knows? But uh, my message is uh, is the same whether I do it to a national audience or just to you folks here. And that is, the world is getting smaller. And that begs the question: Can't we just get along? Very generous of you. 
very giving. The lovely heartfelt sentiment. Can't we just get along? I don't, I don't think you uh, can state that enough, Dave. Uh, so I also want to say... Um, sono un artista, non posso spessarti. Sei le più belle ragazze del mondo. Il metodo moderno di artificiale respirazione. Allo andele, vuoi con me? Solo ando, lo pelle le pandele. Solo tanto, e le comande dentro. Man, that's pretty damn impressive. Maybe it's like that uh, guy in U2 said, until all the colors bleed into one. <laughs> all right, enough of that. Let's get on. Did you used to work for Hallmark? <laughs> Listen, uh, this is something interesting. You uh, trying to stop smoking, or you have stopped smoking. Well, How's it I'm, going? I'm pretty good. You know, I, I was never a serious smoker, but I, I have a problem when I'm around other people who smoke. What uh, is that? You're annoyed by it? No, the it's that smoke? Zelig thing. I, I, it makes me want to. Oh, you to start do it. to smoke. I, I, it makes me want to. Makes I've tried to, to resist it. There are a few smokers on news radio. I'm not going to give any names. It's, uh, it's, uh, they're close friends. But I have found a way. Look, smoking is a terrible, pernicious habit. I don't, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's like a million people an hour bye-bye from cigarette smoke. I know in New York City, 5,000 people a day are killed just by being hit by cigarettes flicked out of car windows. Is that right? Yeah. See, I, you, those are the statistics you no, don't it's, know. You've got to research, You've got to know the, the surgeon thing is, generally. There is a way to stop. <laughs> I've discovered it. I'm, I am, I've never been so excited about something in the health arena. And, <laughs> and Didn't you and I is, go to baby. a fight once down at the health arena? I thought so. But seriously, oh, you're smoking cigars. I'm smoking cigars, yeah. Dave. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I I'm not joking. This is a way to quit smoking because you get all the tobacco pleasure and enjoyment right. without inhaling, without cutting your wind. And uh, you just will have to choose quality, you know, get a nice Dominican uh, cigar. Uh, uh, people are going to tell you that the... Cuban stuff is That's the what best. I've heard, yeah, no, yeah. this is, believe me, you do not want to support this bonehead communist regime. Right. If someone gives you a, a, a Cuban cigar, send it to Late Night, care of David Letterman. <laughs> and uh, Dave and I will make sure that these things are destroyed. I mean, I wouldn't smoke one of those tawny turds if you wrapped it in a mink stole. No, that kid. Well said. Strictly the Dominican stuff. But if you're, if you're having trouble quitting smoking, give it a try. Yeah. Can I light Oh, sure. Let me see if I have a good old-fashioned American lighter for you there. Oh, here. How about these? There you go. You've been known to partake in an occasional Well, I cigar. smoke the El Productos. They're made in Tucson. <laughs> a nice capitalist uh, company. Uh, what are we doing here now? We have to do a commercial? All right, we'll be right back with Phil Hartman, ladies and gentlemen. Girls, welcome back to the show. Phil Hartman is here. Julianne Moore and uh, Candlebox, are you enjoying that? Yeah. You look good with a cigar. It looks very nice on you. You look like a very confident, uh, successful man. A guy in control. Look like a man in Friars Club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me about uh, your relationship with President Clinton. You see him at all anymore now that you're not doing him so frequently? You used to do him. It's like a mainstay of Saturday Night Live. You do President Clinton? I used to impersonate him on And did he ever cause hard feelings with you and the president? I think so. Really? I think Were you ever audited always. as a result of that? Oh, don't give him any ideas. <laughs> Actually, I pay such exorbitant taxes. I think they just look at my return and go, <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> but, um, no, you know, the funny thing was, I did meet the president while I was impersonating him, and I, I know it kind of hurt his feelings because yeah. he did some mean things. And now that I'm not... We're bonding. That's it's good. It's really beautiful. That's great. He comes out uh, to California. You know, the, the Western White House is in a place called Summerlin near Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. 
And, where you uh, live, Santa Barbara? No, but I'm up that way a lot, <laughs> surfing. When you hitchhiking and stuff. Well, no, to visit him. I don't know. Right. What is it? The, the juice highway. of the president. I like to go, Dave. Don't tease me about it. All right, that. I'm sorry. I'm a sensitive guy. <laughs> but he, uh, he's really a great guy to hang yeah. with. Uh, I'm, and I'm getting into, you know, I'm in the boating thing, and we go snorkeling together. The he loves whales. He snorkels. Yes. That's a sight, isn't it? He loves... <laughs> I want to enjoy that mental image here for just a second. He eats a lot of government cheese. He gets it for free. And, but he's a sweet man. Government. There he is right there. That's my, that's my head. That's my head in front of the, on, on, the, on the far left. He loves, he loves uh, dolphins, porpoises, whales. Anything with a blowhole. And he, he told me. Oh, man. Boy, there's, there's another rather unpleasant image. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, you mean... <laughs> no, 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 no. He told me the best joke I've heard in two years. This is from the president. This is from the president. Right. It's a clean joke, as one might expect from the president. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite joke I've ever heard. All right. He goes, Phil, what did Buddha say to the hot dog vendor? I don't know. Make me one with everything. Oh, that's cute. See, it took me a second. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a philosophical yeah, deal. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. Great guy. Did I tell you about news radio? It's it's one of the top five shows in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The uh, it goes like this. It, number one, late show. Oh, yeah, thank number. you very Always much. Always been my favorite. Yeah. Number two, you The Simpsons. Didn't, you didn't see which, the opening piece, apparently. <laughs> what, I thought. Hey, oh, I no, thought, just keep going. Don't worry I about it. I thought Tony, the cue card man, had the best joke. Yeah, he's always tops, isn't he? Yeah. All right, so The Take Simpsons. You like The Simpsons? Uh, the Simpsons. <clears throat> Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Any Ren and Stimpy fans here? <laughs> so kills me. And then News Radio, and then Wings. Not the sitcom, the, the World War II grainy footage combat. <laughs> You just finished a, uh, speaking of World War II, you just finished a, uh, a movie version of Sergeant Bilko. That's right. Which was a That's huge right. television show in the, like, the 50s big show. and early 60s. That's right. Yeah. With Phil Silvers. Phil Silvers. And, and uh, yeah, we did, uh, we did it this summer. It was produced by a man named Brian Grazer, who did a little film called Apollo 13. <laughs> <laughs> what? So what? So what? I mean... <laughs> Like you get leftover astronaut suits or something? What? So what? <laughs> All right, the, the, the movie Sergeant Bilko co-stars a few comedians you may have heard of. Steve Martin and Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> uh. So what? So you, you get all the free tang you want? So what? <laughs> I got to play Army for, three, uh, for 12 weeks. Yeah, it must sound like a very funny movie. Yeah, unfortunately, because Steve and Danny goofed off through the whole thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I give the most riveting performance of my career. We had the technical advisor, uh, Captain Dale Dye, who wrote the novel Platoon. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and collaborated with Oliver Stone on the movie Platoon. And he, man, he had me so spit and polish. Uh, they, they, they dyed my hair blonde, uh -huh. and I had a buzz cut, and I looked real mean. And I'm the bad guy in the movie. Yeah. They taught me how to salute. Did anybody ever teach you how to salute, Dan? No, sir. Here it comes. <clears throat> a salute, according to Captain Dale Dye, is straight up, straight down, straight up. You can just make out your little finger. You Where does touch. it go up here? Just above the no, eyebrow? It goes up. Well, here's something interesting. You do not salute if you're not wearing your cover, your hat. Yeah. And so usually you take off your hat when you go indoors. You don't salute indoors. Don't salute indoors. But outdoors, you touch straight up. Now. This is interesting. And he told me this. This is, this is like an unofficial military protocol, but this really happens. If you're sal saluting a superior officer, as crisp as you can make it. Yeah. Maybe it's a, a lower officer. Then it gets kind of, you know, yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. casual. Maybe the finger starts to drift away. <laughs> you know? uh, maybe it's somebody you actually don't even like uh -huh. that much. And then it goes like... <laughs> And then if, if you're saluting Miss America or a beauty contestant, it's like that. 
according to Captain Dale Dye. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're about half nuts. <laughs> Sam would say half nuts. I prefer half sane. Yeah, okay. I'm a positive thinker. Phil, you know, it's uh, uh, great to see you. And, and, and uh, no surprise that you're very successful now in a, another television venture. Congratulations on that. Enjoy the cigar. Come back anytime. Nice Thank to have you, you here. Sir. Phil Hartman, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, for eight years, our first guest uh, was a very funny and talented performer on uh, Saturday Night Live. Now, this man is starring in a brand new motion picture entitled Sergeant Bilko, which opens all across the country on Friday. Do me a favor, please welcome back to the program, Phil Hartman. <laughs> Welcome back to the program. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for uh, breaking in our extra tall microphone and our new set. Very nice, Dave. Thank you. By the way, it's not Phil Hartman anymore. It's not Phil Hartman. Nah, it's, it, name strikes me as kind of bland. I think I'm going to change it to my Simpsons name, Troy McClure. Troy McClure. You may know me from such motion pictures as Hitler Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Ah. And sorry, wrong closet. <laughs> I also did some educational films. Lead paint, delicious but deadly. Yeah, I think I saw that. Did you see <laughs> Locker Room Towel Fight, The Blinding of Larry Driscoll? <laughs> <laughs> Call that thing off, man. Yeah. Did you uh did you get a chance to watch the uh did you get a chance to watch the Academy Awards last night? I am <laughs> Like you, and I yeah. assume everyone, I am reeling like, what the hell happened? <laughs> no top ten list. <laughs> no pet trick. Well, that changed the whole thing. And then the, the friggin' kilt movie walks away with it? Come on. <laughs> My money was on the baby. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, oh, and then, and then, you know, I like Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon is a... Good actress. She's a lovely woman, you know, and she's built like she's a like, talented. Yes. And you know, I'll tell you one thing though. I, I, I saw Dead Men Walking, All right. a great movie. Sure. But didn't change my mind about capital punishment, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but Sharon Stone. You know, when I was an outlaw biker, I had twenty old ladies. Exactly like Sharon Stone. I, I, you know, I had no idea. She was so right on. <laughs> so it was a disappointing night for you then. Like this? Yeah. No, come what? on. What are you talking about? Oh, well, no, You're you see, to the start thing is, trouble? I, I, I came into town. You had a big weekend, I know that. Well, I hosted a little show called Saturday Night Live. Yeah, congratulations. Get... Oh, yeah. Man, what a thrill. How long were you on the program? Eight years, I guess, we mentioned in the uh, introduction? Eight years, 153 episodes, 518 characters, 627 wigs. Wow. How much money? Not that much. <laughs> no, really, not that much. Well, I'm on a different late night pay scale. I than see. You. So it must have been fun to go back as it, the host of the show. Yeah. The, the jolt is walking out there before the monologue and getting the ovation from the audience. It was so thrilling. Uh, it was so emotionally overwhelming, like dream come true time. It must have been what Michael Jackson felt when he met Macaulay Culkin for the first time. You know? like, this can't be happening. Uh, well, well, I'm sorry the pig was here to see that. Uh, I tell you what, Phil, uh, stay right there if you can. Here? That's a beautiful suit, by the way. That's a very handsome piece of clothing. A it's a lovely garment. We've got to do a commercial. We'll continue here with Phil Hartman. Come on back, folks. <laughs> Back to the 
big program. Phil Hartman is here, and uh, Rose Hamburger, this is a fascinating woman. She's 105 years old, and she is a thoroughbred handicapper, and also uh, the band will be with us. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, private flying experiences. You now are a license holder. That's right. I am an aviator. Congratulations. Private pilot, ladies and gentlemen. Hard hat sales have gone through the roof. <laughs> Convertible sales plummet. Where do you go? What do you do? And uh, is it fun? Do you scare yourself? Uh, eh, the first few lessons can be a little nerve-wracking, but then you get overconfident, and that's when it's really dangerous. Yeah. And, and do you take uh, all your friends uh, when you go flying? No, because, because it's touchy. You know, like, I don't like to go flying with other people. I get invited by experienced pilots, and I don't trust anybody, yeah. so I don't push it on people. But if somebody says, hey, I want to go flying, I'll, I'll take them up. I took J John Lovitz up, believe it or not. Ah. And, and when you get him up there, do you go nuts? Do you do tricks? Do you, are you rolling? Are you doing cartwheels? No, I'm, I'm a very responsible pilot, I must say. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> But he was nervous enough, naturally, you know. He, he, he just he couldn't believe it. He was yeah. so excited. You know, how does it fly? You know, and I explained Bernoulli's principle of lift versus <laughs> weight and thrust versus drag and all that. And he goes, well, and he, they, they want to trust you. They yeah. want to believe sure. that you have all the answers, you know. Why is the sky blue? Well, the, the red spectrum is absorbed by the air, you know. Uh, where do babies come from? Uh, why did Tom and Roseanne break up? But what's, really? what's the difference between Edam cheese and Gouda cheese? You know, I Very don't have the answers, sure, and you can't yet be expected he... to know and then everything. then he starts spilling his guts oh, out yeah. to me, Dave, and this folds the seat back, and suddenly I'm his shrink. I, because of patient doctor confidentiality, I can't reveal what he said. He probably just I do well. want to say to the ladies out there, if you date John Lovitz, don't wear blue. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> a cautionary note. Tell me about uh, Sergeant Bilko. This is a, another great cast, a great well, you, project. Well, you and I are the same age. Now, you loved that show. It was, a, it was kid, a wonderful right? television program. Great yeah. show. And, and it's been reinvented for the 90s. And Steve Martin. You, Steve Martin, movie. Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Who else? Well, uh, a great ensemble of, of young actors like Max Casella. And Glenn Headley is in it, mm -hmm. a fine actress who was uh, with uh, Steve and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. And... Uh, just a, a, a large un ensemble of young actors in the platoon. Yeah. It's been updated and modernized, so the platoon is multi-ethnic, and there are men and women in it, and it's kind of like an Animal House platoon with Steve Martin, Wild and Crazy. Man, can't beat it. <laughs> well, that's good. My dad was a salesman, by the and way. And it opens, uh, opens on Friday all across uh, the country. You know who was uh, here a couple of weeks ago? Dana Carvey. Dana Another Carvey. Another friend of yours. Yeah. I, I just did a guest spot on his show yesterday, yeah. uh, and I, I, I've always loved Dana, and I, I really am rooting for him to bring variety to prime time. We did a, we, you know, his Ross Perot has always killed me. So we, we did Ross Perot on Larry King, and I did Larry King. And my observation on Larry King is that he has two volumes he speaks at, ten and three. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... We're back with Ross Perot. Are you going to run for president? <laughs> More after this. <laughs> He's just got to get their attention. That's right. Yeah. Listen, uh, I hope the film is a huge success. Thank you very Thank much you, for sir. being here. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back with the late show. I'm your host, Siveretti Gotaiki. <laughs> hey. uh, on the program tonight, Phil Hartman, of course, uh, Luther Vandross, and uh, who am I leaving out? Somebody big, huh? Everybody. Bob Bull, Bob Costas, Mr. Sports, and myself, Bob uh, Costas. You know, from his uh, characters on The uh, Simpsons, that's a cartoon, to his role on uh, news radio, our first guest is one of television's funniest actors. He also stars in the new film, Jingle All the Way, it opens tomorrow. Here he is. A nice warm welcome, please, for Phil Hartman.
thank you enough for cutting, uh, cutting your hunting trip short to be with us here tonight. <laughs> I smell chili. Hey! <laughs> My pants are full of chili. How you doing, buddy? Nice going. Nice to see you. Thanks, Dave. It's always a pleasure yeah. to be here. How you been? Everything all right? Everything's good. I... You know, as long as I'm here, there's something I've got to get off my chest. What's the problem? I lied to you, Dave. Regarding? Well, my very first appearance on this show, which I believe was in 1988. 1988, back at NBC, the old place. I was, I was trying to set up a chunk I used to do when I was an <laughs> improv artist. Uh, where set I do, up a chunk. Yeah, oh, I, I, love I, that I kind did of impressions stuff. in German. And, uh, so I told you as a setup, yeah. facetiously, uh, that, yeah, when I was in college, I used to hitchhike over Europe. I ended up in Germany uh, working in clubs doing stand-up, and Stern Magazine voted me the funniest man in Germany. Oh, I think I remember this And now. then yeah. it got back to me that you had told a friend, you know, yeah. Phil Hartman was voted the funniest, funniest man, man in, in Germany. Germany. I've never been to Germany. Really? But I did this thing, and so I, I set it up so I could do impressions in German. And, well, I'm I just sorry. wanted to well, that's very nice of you to come clean. Straight. Yeah. What were those clean. impressions? May I do them for you now? Well, please do. <laughs> okay. Um, the Grand Americana Shakamaka, Jack Bunny, Jack Bunny. Rune Rochester, Ich will this Rune to Carmen. Danke, danke. Herr Macho, the top banana, meet the film, flying tigers, look out of his way. Here he is coming. John Wayne, look out. <laughs> Buster Lieben, Poppy. <laughs> the flunkender up perception examiner. Uh, <laughs> the little necked waffen met their flying tiger. <laughs> Danke, meine Favorite is Jock Nicholson und Chinatown, Jock Nicholson. <clears throat> and Sheldigan, Sie Frau Mulray. Very nice. Wo bist du intercourse and mit du Vater? Der will nicht deine pregnancy mit der sister, Robin. Excellent. Well, I'm the funniest man in Germany. I mean, you know, I don't care that it's not true. To me, you are the funniest man in Germany. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Are you, you're back in business now. Your boy Clinton's got four more years. Hey, still, hey, a vote do? for Bill was a vote for Phil. Exactly. <laughs> Bubba's back. You know, what's interesting to me about this is now, now he's got the job, Dave. Mm. You know, he doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. It's his last time. And I got a feeling we're going to see the real Bubba. <laughs> Just you go know? nuts, you Yeah, mean? goatees, ponytails, ah. nose rings. <laughs> they probably come to work dressed each day as one of the village people, you know. <laughs> he, he, what are we going to do, fire him? Yeah. I, I think now, along those lines, now, really, just keep your eye on this man's weight. I'm telling you, <laughs> the Scott, we're looking at 300 before he's done. Yeah, you know, he could have a future in professional wrestling, too. <laughs> Leave the Oval Office, retire, and go into wrestling. Uh, hey, hey, I got kind of an Elvis. Uh, it looks great. I got to get some sequins on this, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bubba, shoot out the TV. Push. Is that Hartman doing me again? Hey, man, he's doing, you know, that's his nickname, the What's Secret that? Service. Elvis. Oh, they call him Elvis. That's yeah. They call Clinton right. Elvis. Yeah. Elvis is coming into the building. Mm -hmm. You know, say, the... son of Red, uh, go get me a couple of nutty buddies, man. <laughs> you know the uh, Secret Service nickname for Al Gore? No. Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> that's got a change. He's just that dull. Uh, you, uh... You bought yourself a new car. Mr. Big Shot making that big prime time money now. You bought yourself a new car. Oh, yeah, baby. Hey, nothing wrong with uh, an Accord. But uh, I got a hold of a little Italian action. Yeah? Yeah, just a little a white Ferrari F F355 Berlinetta. <laughs> oh, my God, that sounds very... <laughs> Five million people just changed the channel. <laughs> Uh, now we can talk about whatever we want. <laughs> Get me a highball. I got a pinched nerve. What the hell's going on? What, what happened here? Uh, who wants to see fat pig actors talking about their uh, opulent lifestyle? I do. I can't get enough of it. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you a little I'm bit. I'm giving away hams all night. What do I care? Uh, hey, you, I know you're modest about everything, but you were a Porsche owner. I've, I've been lucky enough to uh, drive, rented one. Once. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Ask the Connecticut uh, state troopers about yeah. that. Uh, well, I, I was a Porsche guy for years, but there's a whole other level of performance in mm -hmm. a Ferrari. Because just by example, a Porsche redlines at 6,700 RPM. Yeah. 
Ferrari Redline's at 8,500. Whoa, look at You're out. talking 375 horsepower, V8, 40 valve, dual overhead cam, 11 to 1 compression ratio. You're talking about an engine that doesn't go, it goes, wee, wee. <laughs> and the acceleration is like, wee. <laughs> and it should be illegal. Yeah. yeah. The, other, the other difference you're pointing out, <laughs> the other difference. I'm okay. Don't you try that. Dollar. No, I'm done. <laughs> And the other difference that you haven't pointed out, you own a Ferrari like that, you go out every morning and underneath your car is all the oil you put in the day before. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then you got, it takes a 20-minute class to learn how to get into it. This is how you get into a, a, a Ferrari. You walk in, it's kind of low, open the door, sit down, uh, and you got to swing your legs, uh, bend around the steering wheel, and, and then, oh, you did it wrong. motoring. <laughs> but they are pretty. They're like an obnoxious Italian whore. I hate you. I love you. <laughs> Take me for a ride. <laughs> Sono un artista. Non posso sposarti se la più bella ragazza del mondo. My, oh my. Yeah, two hours sleep. <laughs> You got the big uh, film opening up this weekend, uh, Jingle All the Way, you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. Jingle All the Way to the Bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. You know, uh, I worked with some of the smaller echelon stars for a while. Uh, Sinbad, Steve Martin, what have you. Sorry, Steve. Uh, but now, I, I thought, now, who, who has international stature? Yeah. Uh, well, I got into a little action with uh, Arnold, and it was just so wonderful to walk on the set each day and see his eyes light up. Because, uh, you know, I mean, he's done well with the action-adventure genre, yeah, sure. let's be honest. Uh, he was big fan of all those films. Robocop or something, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he did a thing, I got a cyborg thing, yeah, and a chasing like an alien in the jungle yeah. thing. Like, <laughs> but when he gets into comedy, dude, Look he's out. in my territory. Oh, that's right. And oh, every day talking to him, I say, oh, the Phil, you're so exciting, so glad you're on the team, all the things you've done. <laughs> Eight years, Saturday Night Live and such with the Simpsons and the Toy McClure, with you may know me from such films as an art. I just love the voices of doing the commercials. The funniest man in Austria. Phil Hartman, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, Phil. Thank Have you, a great holiday season. Coming up with tonight's top ten.